Sorry. I'm gonna meet you. I'm gonna work out her. You can help her. Specifically behind the TV. I know. 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 I Okay. Oh, just see on this USB thing. Hi, right. here's Scott. Hi. Yeah. Trying to uh, accommodate, but it's been a whole thing. Are we good? Uh, we're we're good. It's just um, okay. Yeah, it's working better right now. All right. Okay. I think we're okay. yeah. I think we're okay. Does it have any instructions? Have any instructions on? Okay, I really do apologize, everyone. It's uh, been a thing. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Um, so, Scott from IT was not here, so we're trying to figure it out. And I think we did. I don't, we don't really need council chambers because it's still like in there. So, I know the mayor uh, responded and said that he has something for the Ryder Cup that he had to do on site today, so he was not able to make it. And I heard from Betty who said that she has something for school, so she was not able to make it. I don't know if we have a quorum or not. And if we, I don't know. If we don't, do we just talk? Do we not? Um, I mean, I, the mayor said that we should look at, um, like if there's certain places that we, for instance, want to put like waste pickup stations or something like that, something that, especially if that could get folded into other projects uh, as the city is working on them in the parks or different things. If there's, I, all I caught was the mayor said something about, something about pickup. Okay. Are you having a hard time hearing me, period? No, just, you just kind of, just kind of blanked out and lost your cut out for a second, at least on my end. Cool. That's kind of on par for the day, I guess. Um, uh, so the mayor said that we should um, talk about a couple things. If there's places in the city that we would really like to see things like a pet watering station or a waste station, um, to come up with some of those. And then I guess Wildwood <clears throat> Park, which is where they play softball. He's been getting phone calls about not allowing dogs there and that softball teams are going to take their games elsewhere. Um, so I don't know oh. exactly. Um, you know, Joe, if that's something under your purview, but he just said to discuss it and I guess recommend one way or the other. Or did he, did he see what the problem was with the dogs there? I don't know, not 
just that they're not allowed at this point um, and people want them to be. Okay, I see. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I did. Yeah. They, they are not allowed in Wildwood. I've been in contact with the chair, um, the president for the association. He said he was gonna start coming down on people. Um, I have sent, uh, that was just from one person contacting me. I have sent, had a couple different ones. So I will contact him again and, and uh, tell him we continue to get complaints. But people can also call the police to, to go over there and start ticketing or, or kicking them out. So. so from what the mayor said though, I think he is looking at, you know, could they be allowed there more than can we keep them? They, you know. they shouldn't be allowed someplace like that where there's kids running around and um, that's one of the places that absolute you don't you don't allow a pet during during games. Okay. But it's something that's just me and what I've read on other cities, you, you don't do that. But that's certainly up for this this uh, um, this group to talk about too. They should not be at it in my mind. They should not just like they should not be at a playground. I mean, I think that's part of the larger conversation that we've been hoping to have, right? I, and just a sign that yeah. I think it's going to start bubbling to the surface that like people probably want their pets around and starting to come up with a plan of where it is appropriate, where it isn't appropriate, instead of kind of the blanket no that's out there now. Um, that broader conversation is probably right. worth it. I just don't know how we can have it or what the rules are to have it productively um, in terms of getting a quorum or not and moving this committee forward. Right. Um, let me see what our number is at right now. I think we might actually have a quorum because we have a couple of people that were removed from the committee prior to this meeting. It just seems like this is probably the core group from what I've seen, like this is the dedicated core of, of the group. Um, yeah, I agree. And that's where I'm like, well, I don't know what the rules are and we need to reform as a committee or something so that we can have a group that can maintain quorum. Right. And I know that's something that um, the mayor is looking at. Um, so we removed four people um, cool. since the last meeting. So I think we might be at quorum. Let me just double check. So I don't get in trouble with the city attorneys. <laughs> we don't want that. I prefer yeah. not to. Oh, yeah, we have a quorum. I, I just honestly don't see how we can even be having some a, a discussion about how to deal with that when we don't even know what we don't even know, first of all, the procedures for having such a discussion. And secondly, what, um, you know, what the end goal would be for that discussion. Right. I mean, I guess my mind is we're comfortable, you, you know, kind of going with the original idea of like, what is the overarching goals of this group? Because until we have that, it's really hard to come up with anything actionable or anything uh, in terms of objectives, like laying out responsibilities or who's doing what or who we need to talk to um, if we don't really know where we're going. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we really know where we're going. Are we still looking at the the pet friendly uh, certification. I mean, I think that's part of the question is, uh, you know, is that something we want to pursue? Is that, I get the sense that's not the end goal. Um, like maybe that's something we want to have along the way, but it's not necessarily the end all be all for this committee. <laughs> Thought we were making progress on the park ordinances, you know, investigating other cities, and you know, I thought that was one of our goals was to get pets allowed in some areas in some of our parks. 
which I think was all tied up with that survey. Right. So, and I'm not sure if everybody has it anymore, but I, and for the life of me, I can't find my file, but I handed out and I sent out um, basically a, a, a pet inventory um, report from 2009 or something like that. What if we, um, we did this for water safety, we, we basically updated that report. Why don't we, as one of our goals is to up, update that report and, um, you know, um, turn it into the Marina Parks and Forestry for their consideration. At what time, I'm not sure, but that would be one of our goals. I like, I, I like that because at least it might help us if we have, we, if we have that to focus on, then we're, we're bound to learn other things along the way that we can start addressing. Well, send that to you, Abby, and we can make sure the, the people that have been participating the most um, could go through that and we could at least find paths from there. Right. There's a, a lot of information that I sent out from other cities and, and Fox, so I mean, I could pass that along again too before the next meeting. Sure. Um, so I guess when I, I don't know, when I think about it and have been thinking about it, you know, parks is one piece of the puzzle, um, but I think there's others, you know, our relationship with the Maine Society, for instance, as a city, um, and other revenues, uh, you know, business. I think the business overall, oh, oh, sorry, I was going to say just overall culture as well. Um, responsible pet ownership, like all that touches everything, right? I know that um, including early this morning, we've been charged by off-leash dogs twice in the last 10 days, which is super awesome. Um, gotten lucky each time. But I think that overall, to me, the, the overall goal of what is the pet culture in town and um, building responsible pet ownership leads to new park rules, leads to a relationship with the Humane Society, that leads to everything, right? So you start with kind of mission, vision, values of what we want the culture to be, and then look at each of the subtopics. And I think that's where the assessment was really useful in terms of giving us those subtopics of housing, office, um, pet-friendly offices, parks, humane society, all the things, and how the mission, vision, values that we identify should apply. Once we identify those, look at those subtopics and say, okay, what does the mission, vision, values that we chose apply to each of these subcategories and what would we recommend for them? We don't have to do them all at the same time. Like we should definitely prioritize those subcategories, but that seems to be the way to get to something that's consistent, right? And can be justified justified as to why we're making recommendations we're making. Yeah, that that I agree. And that was why that was why I thought that maybe also updating this 2009 survey could be helpful as well. Maybe that, maybe that could be part of it. Michelle, what was the off-leash thing you stated? There's two oh, I've just been walking my dog like twice in the last 10 days. Um, just got charged by a pit bull once, and then this morning on the river walk, got charged by a German shepherd. Both off-leash. And both ended up fine, got lucky. The pit bull was just friendly and wanted to play apparently, but... Um, it just reminded me, like, there's a whole pet culture and ownership thing going on in town as, yes. as well, you know. Just dealt yeah. with a similar situation myself this morning. Well, I think, like you said, that responsible pet ownership and that education and all of the things that go with that underpins everything else. So I think we could define what we want to see as a city for pet owners and non-pet owners alike, you know, and then we can talk about how we communicate that and how we educate people and how we apply that, like you said, to everything. Um, how, okay, so how are we gonna go about it? So I think um, this is where the Humane Society and I think like the city of Sheboygan have that opportunity where we have, I think, close to 20,000 um, people on our Facebook page. 
So if we come up with some of those tips and tricks that we can be educating the community, that's things that between us and even the city can share of places that are safe to take your animals off leash and parks that are safe. And so I think a lot of that is just primary education where if we make it more readily available to people, then they are going to have an understanding. I think in my talks with just basic people within the community, um, a lot of people don't know like that they can't have their dogs off a leash in a park. You know, yes, there might be a sign posted on one corner of the park, but they don't readily go out and look for it. And if you see other people doing it, you automatically assume it's okay. Um, so really taking, you know, an opportunity to educate people regularly, I think is, is a big first step. Um, Cause making the assumption that anyone is going out and looking for that information is not gonna get us anywhere. Um, you know, most people are just gonna do what they wanna do unless they're told, told differently. Um, so I think that would be a great first step for us of, you know, just some of those basics and putting it out there so that people are getting that awareness. Um, I'm happy to help work with, you know, we have a marketing person on staff and put something together. Um, we just want to figure out what those specific tips and tricks would be um, to, to start with. So I think, you know, that that's a great first step. Um, and, you know, if the city is willing to share that on their site as well, um, you know, we can reach a lot of people that way. So I, wonder, I, would, I would agree okay. and I, I would I would also add that there might be a step before that in identifying the mission, vision, values and the culture yes. we want for the city because we can communicate as is today and I'm not, I think this group is saying maybe we want to change what is today. So I think first coming up with that culture and that would lead to tips and tricks, totally agree with that. And that would also lead to recommendations of what we might want to submit to the Marina District or whatever to to first be clear on what we kind of ideally want. Um, based totally on the agree. Yeah. So to get to that, do we do we want to work on coming up with those things? Uh, do we want to research maybe what other cities? I don't know. I'm not well, clear. I, that. I think if I think if we have somebody who can look into perhaps what the Humane Society has to offer, if somebody can look into perhaps what the city has to complement that and maybe maybe somebody or some people to what other cities are doing in order to educate for pet ownership is that all kind of what mars had laid out i know michelle i know you know a lot of that off the top of your head because you you've totally done a lot more reading than i have <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of this stuff is in the sorry, is in the book from Mars. So I think yeah, I mean, that's why I think Mars is a nice starting point. Like rather than saying, oh, we want to great, we got checked off by Mars, our work is done. I think that's a nice starting point of like, okay, this is what we have, this is what we don't have. What's the delta? What you know, what do we want to change? Determine what we want to change and then go do research to see if that's a good idea or not. Mm -hmm. But somehow we need to ground ourselves in what we want. What we um, want. And, and then look into what we want and decide whether that's a good idea or not. So I, I think Mars is a good starting point. Some research is a good starting point, mission, vision, values. Um, and then start looking for deltas between where we are today and what we want. And, what, and then start assigning tasks based on what we need to do to change those deltas. Yeah, I think if we can come up with like kind of a guiding mission statement and you know what what we value as a committee what we're hoping to achieve um in terms of a vision and you know that can be you know i think education is probably a huge part of that i think you know, i don't know what that's like but i guess how do we define that mission and our vision yeah i mean to me that's that's kind of the central question and it's probably a committee meeting, right? And, or even a um, like recommitment to this task force. And the, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a new first meeting of starting to discuss what we want, um, what we think the community wants as, as a town and, and how we wanna function, right? 
been around for like a year now. Do we need to relook at leadership? I have no idea. Like, do we do we want to reorganize ourselves and take that opportunity um, to reorganize and, and re get calibrated on what our goals are? And as part of that, define what's our mission. I would say, salad, sorry. <laughs> I would say that becoming a more pet friendly city is our mission. Well, yeah, that too. Well, we, we have to kind of define what we mean, though, by pet friendly city. Unless we're, we're going specifically off the Mars, you know, all the information that's on the Mars. And so maybe that is a good place to start. Maybe really digging into that and getting as familiar with it as we can and then coming back together with ideas how we envision moving forward and how what kind of mission statement we would we would want to put together that would define the culture of this group. Right. I mean I guess to Michelle's point, you know when you say when we say pet friendly city, like what does that like what does that actually look like? Um, yeah. And I think answering that, you know, if we can answer that, that's a good mission. Uh, you know, to get to that point where it's, you know, whatever that may be, where it's people are responsible with their pets, it's you know, as harmonious or whatever that can be. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think actually what we could do is we could take the Mars document and their subgroups and we could say to us, um, the Pet Friendly Task Force, a pet friendly city means and kind of make a statement for each of those subcategories. And then that becomes our marching orders to go figure out what that statement means in reality, right? So, so we'll just make one, wait, make one up that like, we want 10 restaurants to allow dogs on their patios. I have no idea. I'm completely making that up. But if we decide that's like the retail, cat, there's like a retail category in the Mars, if we decide that's what that is, then the marching order would be, okay, who's going to go figure out if Having 10 restaurants that allow that is a good idea. What do other cities do? Which restaurants can we talk to? Blah, blah, blah. And that can become like the action plan. So in terms of mission, though, would you say then that, you know, as part of the mission statement, it would be, um, <clears throat> you know, Sheboygan is a welcoming, a pet welcoming community or uh, a community where pets are welcome, you know, in the, these different spheres or where housing is available for owners and pets of all types and all price ranges are like, how specific do you get, right? Because the mission statement should really be an enduring thing, um, right? I mean, yeah. And I am the, I'm not an expert in mission statements. I will definitely say that, but in my mind, what, what I'm seeing is, you know, Sheboygan is a pet friendly city to us that means, and then it's kind of statements about each category we choose to decide is important to being a pet friendly city. And I don't know how specific or not those statements should be, but um, that's how my brain organizes it. I have no idea if that makes sense to anyone else. I kind of see those statements getting kind of put together and refined as we're, as we're beginning to sort of focus in on what our, what our objective is. Right. Well, hopefully we can, I don't know, Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I mean, mission statements, I was always, I always was told and taught and learned that it should be broad enough that it's, um, you know, can carry on and it should be specific enough that you have a good sense of like what you're supposed to be doing and when you're outside the box and when that's not a mission focus anymore and that you can draw your objectives, you know, from that to say like, okay, we want to see that there's enough housing available no matter what type of uh, dog you have, you know, what are that, like, what are those specific objectives then that you just go from that? Yeah, and I think for, for this group in particular, because we have a lot of different purposes, um, the, a mission statement itself should be relatively short and concise. Um, you know, two to three sentences most, you look at most organizations and it's pretty simple, clear, overarching. Then when you get into your, you know, your vision and your values, then that's where you start really expanding and breaking it down from there. Um, you know, so so as far as what our purpose is, I think, you know, what Michelle was saying is our overall purpose is to make Sheboygan a more pet friendly community. So we can expand on that a little bit, but, uh, you know, 
as we reach our goals, our, our mission will never change, you know, it, so we want to make our mission broad enough that it's not, we want 10 restaurants to do this and we want 20% of apartments to allow, you know, dogs, whatever that is. Um, because if we reach that, that doesn't mean our work is done. So we, we don't want to have to then change our mission because we reached goals that we can finish off in six months to a year. So we want to ensure that it's, it's a little bit more um, versatile towards the long-term plan for the, you know, the group. Um, so I think keeping that relatively generic uh, without getting too specific for your mission and your vision, you know, your, you know, core values, then we can break it down a little bit more that we're, you know, specifying into the restaurants and, you know, and ensuring that those, those areas, key areas are hit, but I don't think we need to get incredibly specific. That's where we're really more on a broad based plan of what our goals are for the, you know, for the group. Um, but I think keeping it pretty simple from the start is probably a safer bet. Yeah, I guess when I think of the statement, same thought. Sorry. Oh, I just said makes total sense to me. Um, you know, the vision statement, you're kind of looking at what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, so I guess with, with that in mind, like next step, like what do we, we're pretty self-directed, I think, so just appearing. Um, How do people want to proceed? I think maybe if we each want to try to come up with, you know, what our thoughts are as far as what that would look like, um, and then merge them together and kind of go from there. So between now and the next meeting, start pulling that together, um, and maybe you know broaden it from there of what what we envision seeing. So looking at the prior meetings and you know the conversations about restaurants, and so really start. I think developing more of a plan so then we can start having some action items between meetings um, and, and you know assign people to do research or talk to people whatever that is but without having that that plan really ironed out it's hard for us to move forward right and i think even just having the conversation around you know what are the like what are our goals and what are our um, has not been an easy conversation to have up until this point um, or beyond this point, I'm not sure which, but that works for everybody. Do we, we want to wait um, and meet the following in July? Or I know there was some interest in maybe getting together and talking through some of these things ahead of a meeting. I'm not committed either way. I think it would be helpful if we got together in person and you know, came up with a plan that we could then present at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. So if I send out a doodle, does that work? And would you say like you prefer it to be like in the app, like early evening and the over the lunch hour for meeting in person? Well, I'm flexible. Okay. Yeah, I'm flexible. I'm going to be out of town a little bit between now and then, so that would be a limitation for me, but timing of day, I should be flexible. Okay. I'm also flexible. Okay. Me too. Okay. I will be out of town. Uh, leave, I'm leaving the 16th of July, and I will be gone and through the 25th. Okay. But, so I couldn't meet in person during that week. I can make time to do I can make time to be present over video but I'd prefer to meet in person if it's possible okay and Michelle you said you're out of town also yeah I'm leaving the when is it I'm looking at the schedule uh, at the calendar I'm leaving next Friday so the 9th and I will be gone either through the 16th or the 23rd <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be perfect <laughs> Okay, and our next meeting, I think, is the 28th, if I remember. Yeah, I'm looking at that. So that overlaps at all. Um, but I mean, I'm willing to be available and however it can be helpful or everybody moves forward during that time. So since we're all together, can we just look at calendars? Like, does that 
work other than is it possible that we could as a week turnaround maybe next week somewhere wednesday through friday that we could do That's this before you both are out of town okay um i'm out of town through the sixth but i'm back on the seventh so if i could really do any of those friday evening i have something but other than that i don't know I don't know what everybody else's schedule looks like. I the seventh is completely flexible for me. So if that works for anyone else, we could try to shoot for next Wednesday. Seventh works for me. Is it next Wednesday the ninth? The seventh. Oh, I'm still looking at June. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be so helpful here, guys. I can't even look at the right day, the right month. Okay. The seventh works for me. I'm available in the afternoon. Okay. The um, yeah, I have a, I have a break between 11 and 4.30. So yeah, afternoon is relatively open for me. Okay. So like three o'clock? Okay, and where do we want to meet? Do you want to meet here? Do you want to meet somewhere with like coffee or whatever? Coffee. <laughs> as long as we're no, close I'm... to downtown ish, I'll have to be back in my office at 4 30. So it's hard for me. So if we're three, it would. But, um, okay. Yeah, I'll still there's... talk. I'm living in Chicago or something. I, I guess I can get <laughs> Is 2.30 better? That just gives me, I just, I need to be back home at 4.30 for a client call. Well, why don't we do 2.30 then? How long, how long we need a little bit more time. time. Yeah. Is Paradigm open then or no? Or yeah, That's what I was just checking. They're not, or at least as of now, they're only Thursday evening and Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Um, we could, as long South as the weather side. cooperates, we could do Weather Center, but you have to be outside. Yeah. Weather Center is good. Also, I think Z Spot is open during that time. Yeah. I kind of have a sneaky suspicion, too. This is very unhelpful, but I have a sneaky suspicion Paradigm will open on Monday, like yeah. after the holiday. So it may be available. <laughs> uh, a little insider trading there. <laughs> I, I actually no. I just have like I don't know. It's just the uh, no the actual information. I just have the sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So somebody make a decision. Do we want to leave it to be determined? Like somebody should decide. What? Why don't we set it for Weather Center? Because we know that they'll be open, and then we can, you know, if weather or something changes, we can figure out an alternative. Okay. And do we have contact information for each other other than email? Um, like, do you have contact information? I don't believe I have any contact other than yeah. email. Okay. It just might be semi helpful to have another What's way to get with people. I have Abby as contact for Abby, but that that's it. So Abby, if we send you all our cell phone numbers, can you then maybe pull that together and send that out to everyone so we have each other's contact information? I can't hear you guys. Oh, <laughs> can you hear me now? Oh, poor Abby. Did you do anything? Oh, here, I'll try the chat. You can hear me, obviously. Yep. I just can't hear you at all. Okay. Okay, cool. I can send that up there. 
We'll just assume that Abby can do that. <laughs> I was going to say, as a group, let's send our info to Abby. Yeah, yeah she'll, get, she'll, she'll figure it out once she gets everybody's information. Yeah. I need right. to improve my own lip reading ability, I think. <laughs> So let's plan on that. If if you all have time to start working on pulling together what your thoughts are for mission, vision, values, um, and that way we have a little something once we meet, um, and then we can go from there. Sounds At two thirty Wednesday, right. the seventh, weather vane, unless we determine otherwise, right? Weather center, yes. Weather center. Weather vane was my old one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> cool. That's all in the chat, and um, okay. look forward all to right. seeing you next week. Awesome. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good holiday. You too.